Have you ever been building a Canvas app and you've wondered, how can I connect it to Power Automate so that I can call a flow that's gonna do something else? Well, we're gonna walk you through some options for doing that today, how to send data in, how to get data back out. So this is one of those things that oftentimes you don't really think about until you get stuck. So you might be building a Canvas app and you wanna uh, send a file somewhere or maybe generate a file from input from a user in your app or maybe even iterate through some rows in a data set to take some action on those rows or something like that. The reality is that Canvas apps natively doesn't handle those types of things very well and there are numerous examples out there on the internet of ways that you can enhance your Canvas app or your Power app by simply calling a flow to do those that work for you. So in this video, we're gonna walk through what it means to connect to Power Automate from your Canvas app, but then also how to pass data in, a couple different methods for that, and how to get data back out. All right, so just a quick reminder before we jump in, if you like this content, smash the like button, and if you wanna see more of it, make sure that you subscribe. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna first add an automation screen to our uh, Canvas app here. So I'm gonna come over into uh, my home menu. We're going to add a new screen like so. I'm going to rename this to my automate screen. All right, and before we get started, I'm just going to go ahead and make this screen look a little bit prettier. We're going to add our header and our menu. Uh, so we'll find it from our components, header, and a menu. Okay, so now that we're ready to connect uh, this Canvas app to Power Automate or to a Power Automate flow, uh, we're, our first way of doing that is we're just gonna go ahead and add a button to this screen. So it's as if a user wanted to click a button and make something happen in Flow or in Power Automate. So we're gonna go ahead and add a button to our screen uh, and we're going to change our text for that button to Start Flow. And I'm gonna go over here and also adjust some of my colors. So we'll go find our fill. All right, so then the easiest way to connect this button to a flow is to simply select the button. Uh, look for your on select property of that button. So that's basically where all of your action is gonna take place. Um, so now that we've got that selected, you can come up here to your action menu and you can simply click on the Power Automate button. And this will open basically a little data connection dialog, if you will, or panel. And from here you can choose to create a new flow. Now what this is gonna do is this is actually gonna open up Power Automate in another browser window. And there's gonna be a whole bunch of templates, uh, template flows that you can draw from that all are started from a click of a Power Apps button. Uh, in this particular case, I'm gonna go ahead and just create uh, a flow myself. Um, so we're gonna just go to create, and we're going to choose Instant Cloud Flow, and we're gonna give this a name, and we'll go ahead and name it after our button. And again, we're choosing Power Apps as our trigger. So we'll go ahead and create that. And so now I have my flow that's gonna be connected to my button. Now the next thing we wanna do here is we want to actually have this flow do something. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create a new step. And in this particular case, we'll just create an approval. It's a pretty common scenario. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and create an approval. We'll send it to myself. Okay, so there we have a simple approval. We'll go ahead and save this flow. And you'll know everything is good if you don't see any little red marks up here in the flow checker and if you get that green uh, notification that tells you it was saved successfully. So now we can flip back to our Power App and you'll notice that in that data connection panel, now we have a flow that's showing up and that's the flow that we just created. So all we have to do to connect it is simply click on it and it will add it as a connection to our uh, Power App or our Canvas app, and it will also basically begin to wire it up in the on select of that button. So in this particular case, we can simply finish off that wiring it up, uh, and now we're good to go. So if we play this application, 
Um, we can simply come in here and we can click start flow and it will basically create an approval for us. And so now if we go monitor our email or our approval items, we should see that email come in. So let's just give this a second and wait for that approval. Okay, so it looks like we have a new email at 11.15 a.m. It says, please approve this request. And that's our approval that we just sent with that flow. So just like that, we've made it so that you can send an approval to someone through the Canvas app just on a button click. So we've connected Power Apps to Power Automate. All right, so now that we have our basic button wired up to connect to a Power Automate flow, the next question is, what if I actually want parameters? So it's one thing to like invoke a flow, but what if I actually need to send some data to that flow? Uh, so let me first show you a, a simple way to do that using the flow that we've already created. So let's flip back to that uh, flow in Power Automate. And one of the things uh, that you'll notice when you're filling out these fields, for example, so in the title field, we just put some text in there. Um, but if you pay attention to this dynamic content dialog, you'll notice that there's an option here for ask in Power Apps. So if we get rid of the title that we hard-coded there and simply say ask in Power Apps, this will add a little Power Apps variable, if you will, that comes from the trigger body um, of that Power Apps button click. Um, and in this case, it's uh, automatically naming it. It's calling it create an approval underscore title. Um, so we'll just go with that. So now we're going to go ahead and save this. All right, so no red marks on our flow checker, and we've tells us that it saves successfully. Now we can flip back to our Power App and figure out how to pass that in. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to add a uh, text input to this screen so that somebody can actually provide a title. Um, so we'll add that. We'll add a label as well so that we know what it is. All right, and so now our default value for this, we'll empty that out so that the user can fill it in. All right, now the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually reconnect the button. So one of the things, like right now, this is not passing anything in, it's just calling run. We need to be able to pass in a value from this uh, text input. The easiest way to do this is to uh, simply go to your data connections and remove the start flow button connection that's already there. Um, so you'll notice that this is here, and this is the original version that we created that doesn't know anything about the parameters. Um, so it's easiest to simply remove this. And now, of course, we have an error on our button on select. And so we need to rewire this up to the updated version. So we're going to go ahead and click our Power Automate action again. And then we can select that Start Flow button, that same flow that we had before. And it will then re-add that data connection and also begin to wire up our on select. Now this time, you'll notice in this on select in the run function that we have a parameter. Create an approval title uh, is already set there for us, so it's giving us some intelligence that we need to actually provide something, um, whereas before we didn't have that. So we're gonna go ahead and provide the value from our text input field. So we should have a text input somewhere, there it is, dot text. All right, and so now we're actually passing in a value from that field. So let's go ahead and test this out. This time we're going to play the application, and I'm going to put a different title in here. So let's say, pretty please approve this request. And now we're going to go ahead and click our start flow button. And so that should have sent another basically trigger to, to that flow uh, that will ultimately result in another approval for us. So let's go ahead and flip over to our email. And indeed, we have a new approval waiting for us. Pretty please approve this request. And you can see in our email, we can choose to approve or reject it here. Just a second ago, we learned how to use the Ask in Power Apps option, dynamic option, to be able to request parameters from our Power App. But another thing you should be aware of is that there's another type of Power Apps trigger that changes the way that we think about our input parameters a little bit, and that's called the Power Apps V2 trigger. So to use that, I'm gonna go ahead and add another button to this so that we have both uh, types of implementations on this screen. So we're gonna go ahead and add this button. We'll change our text, and we'll call this Start Flow V2. 
make our button a little bit more prominent, and find our fill property. There we go. Okay, so now this time we're gonna go right into flow. So let's go over to Power Automate. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and jump right out of this existing flow and we're gonna create a new flow from scratch. Uh, we're gonna choose Instant Cloud Flow and we're gonna call this Start Flow V2. Um, so now in this particular case, you'll, if you go through this list, you'll actually see that there is a Power Apps and a Power Apps V2 trigger option. So we're gonna choose the Power Apps V2 option. And the first thing that you should notice right away about this is when you select that trigger, you have an option right on the trigger to add inputs. <clears throat> so first we'll add an input for our, and we'll have it be a text input, and this will be our request title. So rather than say input, we'll say request title. We'll add another input, since we're dealing with approvals, we'll make it a Boolean, and we're gonna call it allow reassign. We can apply that to our approval that we're gonna create. So the main thing that you should note uh, when you're doing it this way is that we can be much more explicit or specific and descriptive with our parameter names. So we don't have to rely on Power Automate to automatically generate those names. So in the scenario that you're thinking ahead a little bit and you're thinking about what the extra functionality is that you're gonna do with that flow and you're building that first, you can be more prescriptive with it and then the names are simply more meaningful for the developer who's actually building the Power App. Um, so that's a, that's a pretty big benefit. So we'll go ahead and create a new step here. Um, and in this case, we're gonna, again, use the approvals. And we'll go ahead and create an approval. Choose our approval type. Now in this case, you'll notice that we do not have the option to ask in Power Apps. So because we're using a different style trigger, you don't have that option. But fortunately, we can select our very nicely named parameters. So in this case, we're gonna use the re request title here and then in our advanced options of the approval, there should be an option for enabling reassignment. And so here we're gonna do a custom value and from our dynamic content, we've got a Boolean value already matched up for us for our allow reassign. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So now we're gonna save this flow. Oh, and I always forget one thing or another. Gotta send it to myself. There we go. So now no red marks on our flow checker, we'll go ahead and save it. And we have a new flow. Okay, so now let's flip back to our Canvas app. And on our Start Flow V2 button, we're ready to wire this up. So we can actually go to our OnSelect property. And we're gonna select Power Automate from our action menu. And notice that our new flow is automatically showing up. So it went out and looked and it found that connection to it. So we're gonna go ahead and select that one. And once it is added to our app, we'll get that same uh, beginning of the wire up, if you will, in the on select, and we'll see that we have a couple parameters, a text parameter and a Boolean parameter. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, provide our request title. It's gonna come from our text input. And the next one that we care about is allow reassign, and we're gonna go ahead and set this to false. All right. So now we can actually go and test this button. So let's go ahead and play. And we'll start flow V2. And so I'll get another one that says, pretty please approve this request. And in this case, I should not be able to reassign it. So we'll just wait for that email to come. There it is. All right, so there's my option. Let's actually go take a look at this approval and verify that I cannot reassign it. So a quick way to get to the approvals is you can do that in Power Automate and look through your action items, and you'll see a whole bunch of approvals if you've been testing this. This is that latest one that we received, so we can go ahead and select that. And you'll notice there's no option here to reassign it. If we actually go look at the previous one, just to verify, we have an option to reassign there. So let's again verify this latest one, that that is not an option. So there it is, grayed out. All right, so now that we know a couple different ways that we can pass data into a Power Automate flow, the next thing we really ought to be concerned with is what if I need to get data back from that flow? Um, and it's actually really quite easy. So to do this, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump back to that most recent flow that we were working on. 
um, and where we're creating approval. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new step where we're gonna wait for that same approval so that we can get the results. So we're gonna wait for an approval. We'll wire this up to the ID of the approval that was created. All right, and the next step that we want is we're gonna actually return or respond to Power Apps. So if we look in our list here for respond, we should have an option to respond to a Power App or flow. All right, so in this case, just like our trigger, we have an option to add an output. Um, and so we can choose text output for ex as a simple example, um, and we can provide response as the name of it, and then we're gonna actually provide the value to response. So you could hard code something here, but in this particular case, what we really care about is the response that comes from the wait for an approval action. Uh, so in this particular case, I'm gonna look for, should be an outcome somewhere here that should be good enough for us. Actually, uh, let's see. Go ahead and do a search for it. There we go. All right, so that'll actually give us the outcome of the approval, and we'll plug that somewhere into our application. So let's go ahead and save this flow. All right, now the next thing we need to do is jump back to our Canvas app. Uh, and in this particular case, we're gonna again click the same button, but it's now gonna return a value for us. And so we gotta figure out how to get that value and, wh and what to do with it. So the what to do with it, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a text label. And in this particular case, I am gonna set the value of this label to a new variable that we're gonna cr create. Called var response, and of course, I haven't created that variable yet, so it doesn't know anything about it. But to create that variable, all we have to do is go into our on select of our start flow v2 button. And this basically, this function, this start flow v2.run returns a value or a collection of values or an object, just like any other method call would in any normal programming language. So we can do something like this. We can say update context. And we can simply set our var response to whatever this thing returns. Just like so. Now we could have also set a global variable um, or something like that. And right now it's returning false because there's basically nothing that's like a default response. Um, so the next thing to do is go ahead and test this and approve that request. So let's go ahead and click our play button. And I'm gonna click, actually let's change this so that we have something a little bit different. with a cherry on top. We're gonna to go ahead and start flow V2. Okay, so now an interesting thing about this is we're actually creating an approval and then we're waiting for an approval. So this button click didn't return immediately. It's actually waiting on the response for that approval. So we're gonna quickly jump over here and we're gonna find that approval and we're going to approve it. All right, so now that approval has been sent, our flow should pick it up. And if we jump back to our app, we'll see that the response was true. Um, so that worked as we expected it. Now that scenario is completely contrived. There is no normal real world scenario where you would actually click a button, send an approval, and then wait on that. Um, so just make special note of that. Um, if you're doing this type of connection and you're waiting on a response, you wanna make sure that you're getting that response back quickly. Um, and if you're doing approvals, there are other ways to deal with uh, once a response is finally available and what to do with it next. All right, that's it for our video on how to connect Power Apps to Power Automate. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you have any questions, feel free to post a comment below. And as always, you can join us for our office hours every month. And if you're interested in more of this type of content, we have some more on our Learning Center on our website.